Hi, this is Jani from J Drones. The next video is one of our conference videos that we have been recording in our Ardupilot Developer Conference during June 2019 at Drone World Congress in Shenzhen. I will be talking about UAV CAN systems on modern UAVs. I hope you enjoy the conference videos. All right. Yes, thank you, Randy. It's always uh, delightful to look at uh, those uh, Randy Randy's presentations and, and uh, they, what what Randy and, and Leonard and others are doing is always exciting. All right. So now it's my turn. Yeah, just stop it. Okay, good. Um, can you put my computer back? All right. So I will be talking about uh, CAN buses now, like I promised earlier. So uh, let's go first uh, quickly through that what is CAN in overall, uh, and, and, and then what are the benefits of CAN. And then I have a small demo in here where I can actually show how the CAN bus is working and how you can add some, some more stuff on that one. So uh, CAN bus is actually, it's, it's, a, it's a really old system. It's been made already on 80s. Uh, it's been uh, originally made for, for automotive industries. I think I have better go in here. Um, and, and basically, every single vehicle nowadays have a CAN system already. So, so it's it's been tested millions and millions of times, which is really good one. And it's coming from a Germany's company called Bosch. The thing what what we have been making is that we uh, basically use the same can ideology and use the can devices and make them to work on all kind of unmanned system. Uh, name says UAV can, but that's not just related to uh, any any aerial system. So we can use it. Doesn't matter. Is it a rover? Is it a boat? Is it a submarine, aeroplane, or whatever? Everything goes. It just depends on which kind of uh, can devices we we want to use on those ones. And and. If we don't have, there's always possibility to create some more. Uh, can in overall, everywhere. You just don't know it. We are most likely using CAN buses even in here on some of the audio and video systems uh, or, or whatever, controlling the lights and others. So it's everywhere. How it works. Uh, usually you have a one master that's uh, sending data or it can be a slave also that is sending data and the others are listening so we have a prepared data we send it out and then we have a, a recipient clients that are listening okay ah uh, there's someone was sending that uh, uh, with the uh, with the ID 7 index 4 for example ah okay that that looks like that's for me so I need to process that one. The next one can device sees the same data and says, uh, uh, this, this is not me, so I just ignore it. If some, uh, in some situation, this one, the number three, wants to send something on a bus, it just looks at when the bus is quiet and sends it there. And then the others are listening. Traditional way of building UAVs. Well, Quite many of you in this room probably has been building uh, some kind of a flying things and others. And there's uh, always a lot of cables. And the more big you go, the more longer the cables are. And, and we know servos and others, they get uh, interfered pretty fast. So, so that's a problematic, especially when you go on big one systems. And, and always you have to bring your cables basically all the way to the autopilot, which is the brains. Can then again, we can have one bus. Uh, the bus is uh, itself already really robust. So the brains itself, in this case, it's our autopilot. Uh, it sends the messages. It might be that we have a light system, or we might be having a GPSs, or we might be having a engine uh, servos, or whatever. 
it just sends data on those ones through the CAN bus, and then we do the local processing, just like and on ailerons, we have CAN bus coming in here and servo connected in here with a five centimeter cable. Or it can be that it's already inside the servo, the CAN bus. There's a, was it high tech? Yeah, high, high, high tech was just announcing CAN servos, which basically you plug in CAN bus and off you go. Uh, another nice thing on CAN systems is that we can have multiple CAN buses running on same devices. We can have a priority lines. Let's say um, we have a light system which is not so important, so that can be on, on, on secondary CAN bus. But servos and others which are always important, they are on the primary bus, but they can also listen to secondary if we have a malfunction on, 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 the, uh, on the primary bus. We can have two, three, four, even more if that's the case. It just depends on what kind of a CAN device we are using. Most of these ones, what I have in here, they only have a one bus. Uh, here's a, uh, one GPS made by uh, one of our friends, Pavel. He's actually the original author of our UAV can. His GPS have two buses already, and they are totally different buses. So if one fails, the one still works. Adding some more, let's say you have a big one aeroplane, and then you think, hey, by the way, I would like to have lights at the wing tips. Yet again, from the traditional way, you need to pull all the cables through the wings again, try to figure out how to make that one without breaking the wing. But in this case, because we already have the can at the ailerons area, we just make the last centimeter. And it's automatically working, up, of course, after you configure all the things. Taking them away, same thing, disconnect. Uh, what kind of devices in general they are or they are going to be. This year we will have a lot more CAN, buses, uh, can, can devices coming. So in overall, for all kind of vehicles, of course we have uh, compasses, some info displays and others. Then we have, let's say, multi-copter UAV specific thing, just like the uh, airspeed sensor. Well, most likely you don't need the airspeed sensor in a rover but that's for, for flying thing. And then again, on rovers, most likely you don't need, let's say, a moisture testing sensor if you're working on agriculture or some other kind of a device. And then uh, we can have uh, different devices for, for sailplane systems, water device, and other. So it's not defined yet what all kind of things there's going to be because extending the current ones is extremely easy. All right, I have this little fellow in here. Like I said, I promised to show you a little bit about how CAN bus is actually working in the real. So we have a so-called general nodes, UC node, the blue one board. Uh, like I said earlier, we can put all kind of things. It basically depends on, on, on what software, what firmware you are running on that one. For this current uh, node, we have 20 plus different kind of firmware. There's a servo system, there's an airspeed, compasses, GPSDs, uh, light system, information displays, EM grippers, and so on. That's why we call it so-called a general, general node. The red one, uh, if you have an autopilot on your board, especially especially uh, something that is coming from, from Ardupilot itself, currently, uh, thanks to Michael O'Born and uh, others, uh, we can use Ardupilot uh, software as a SLCAN. SLCAN is just a, a adapter between computer and the, the, the CAN bus. In here, my computer, SLCAN to connect on the whole system, 
I have a small hub just to make it easier to connect. We have uh, one node, yet again same as a generic node uh, that has been now connected with a two-way uh, two-axis two joystick. It's like demonstrating of, of a ESC output. Then we have a uh, three nodes, and they are uh, a common way with the with the servos. So let's let's start the software. I hope you can see enough. Okay. So in here, this is the uh, uh, can user in interface where you configure all the things. So let's just have the generic node. Currently, it's pretty dark because have no one home. Okay, there we have. The fun thing is this joystick. Then we have on, on the ID number 65, if I remember correctly, it's uh, this servo uh, packet. Uh, 70 is this one and 71 is the most left one. Um, let's put some power. One of the servos will be broken, so it makes a little noise. All right, so the way how I have been doing this one now, uh, this one is the number 51, which is that one uh, you see node, and, and, and uh, we have actuators configured in here. Okay, good. So, so we have actuator on here, and channel number one, is uh, binded on, on the index 2. Channel B2 is being binded on, on uh, channel 1. So we have up and down. If I go, let's say I just change the channel 2 to be a also 2. We have no one in the morning. This is two over. Okay. Okay. All right, good. So, changing uh, the uh, IDs and others, what the different devices is uh, listening, is extremely easy. So let's say I have the 65, which is not connected to anywhere currently. That one is because it's in uh, the output mode A. We have a uh, total of uh, three output modes on, on these boards. So we can actually have a um, six devices connected on one single generic node board. That's the number 70. And like I say, the, uh, channel one in here on the uh, servo board is connected on, on, on ID number one, and that's the number one in here. So output B number one, output B is connected on, on, on uh, uh, ID one. And then the other one, we have output B, output B, uh, uh, sorry. That's connected on number one, and in here we have an output B connected on, on uh, index number two. Uh, let's make this one that doesn't work at all. Have that one. So first we need to go on activating the real output there, and then... Um, it's the one, let's put it, for example, on one. Save, yes, save. No. It's better if you put it on the correct. demo effect. <laughs> Let me just 
restart the node quickly to make sure that it uh, takes the, the changes what I made uh, and activate it. Yeah, now. Uh, so now, now we have two CAN nodes listening the the index uh, one. So, and if I want to move this one now to be just listening to the index number two, it's really simple. I just go on the settings, say two, save it, and now it's on the next one. Uh, this is a really good one for, uh, let's say, if you have a bigger one UAV or whatever, you have multiple uh, aileron servos, and one of the servos, for example, breaks then you can easily fix those ones uh, to compensate the broken one devices. And if we want to now, let's say, I move this one a little bit so we can see. When I was talking about extending devices easily, so We need more optimized user interfaces. <laughs> okay, so just like for the IDs and others, uh, we can define them as a, a fixed IP uh, uh, IDs. Just like 70 and 71 IDs are being fixed, programmed on the device itself, that you are always there. 65 is being given random that ask from the from the uh, UAV and server itself that what should be my ID. Uh, same thing like I have this, I have a small OLED display in here that we can use showing all time for information and if I want to connect this one now on the CAN bus, let's see if I have enough power on the bus. Oh. Now, yeah, looks like I don't have enough power so let's put some more power on the bus. There. All right. We just saw that number 47 appeared in here. That is, the 47 is now the OLED board. So if I would have now someone broadcasting messages that the OLED board would listen, it would start showing them. But because I don't have autopilot in here, so it doesn't show. Or if I want to have a GPS, let's have one GPS in here. Do we have any space? There. On the other end of the system. Soon we should have the, a, a two box GPS. Did you wake it? Yeah, now it just came. Now we have also GPS on board. And, and if I'm starting to look now, uh, I will take activate that one and I will go subscriber. I want to debug a little bit that okay, I have some issues. For example, I want to start looking that is our Compass working. Now let's see. There's a magnetic field on this one line showing uh, all three axes X, Y, Z. So when I'm turning these ones, I can see that my compass is working immediately. So, like you see, working with the UAV can is extremely easy and expanding the whole systems is really easy and fast. And, and, and uh, uh, devices are coming all the time more and more. Now probably there are um, 15, 20 devices already on the market. And maybe on the end of the year it's going to be 50 devices. I'm going to bring some at least, uh, and then th there's many other companies working on those ones. Yes, Tom? Uh, what, what do you mean? Uh, yeah, the, the whole, whole bandwidth of the, the uh, UAV CAN bus is as a one megabyte. So we can put a lot of data on that one. Sure, if, uh, let's, let's say, um, we don't 
really want to have or like for IMUs on, on uh, CAN bus because IMU is so extremely high speed data so we don't want to have that one but GPSC, some uh, compasses, airspeed sensors, all those ones are really okay and you can put them a lot before you're filling up, up your, your data uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, let's see, to be honest, I don't remember what the thing I had on that one, so, <laughs> um, let's see if I can open the bus monitor, no we're on. Currently we have... around, we are on a speed levels around 700 messages per second, which is not, yeah, 680, 700 messages per second is our, our current speed, what is running in here, which is quite small still. Any other questions? Yeah, quarter of the bandwidth. Yeah. This is about yeah, quarter of the bandwidth current. Like if the UAV can is so good, why are we why are we still using the I square C on everything? Time. We just do, haven't been having enough time to make the software ready. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a really good question. We have been having UAV CAN devices and we've been working, even our group, uh, uh, quite many years already with those ones. But so far all the others have been sufficient enough, so, so we really haven't been needing to push it. But uh, starting from last year, and especially this year, there has been now finally enough uh, resources coming coming on that kind of a UAV can development. So it basically it's not it it has never been a hard way. It's more like it being a software issue. Uh, uh, it's not all only time. It's also money. Uh, you can get a very cheap uh, magnetometer for two cents. And if you want to do a magnetometer with uh, CAN enabled, it won't cost you two cents. It will cost you 20 cents. So it's a 10 times the cost. Or even more. Or even more. Yep. Just it, as an example. So yep. it's difficult. The advantages, there are advantages. Um, but the cost can be uh, uh, an issue. The, the raw ship of the like, magnetometer or like no, it's, the... It, it's 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 the same same raw ship, yeah, but because yeah. but because of the uh, along with the raw ship, you need to have a microcontrollers and you need to have a can drivers and also the overall price is getting much more yes. higher. Because the raw ship use ice cream, too. so if it's ice cream, too, you can directly connect to the raw ship. But if you can, you need another controller to control the ship. Yeah. So That's like correct. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, any, anyways, if you have more questions or whatever, uh, by the end of the day we have a, a bigger one, a uh, question and answers uh, session, so, so just write down some questions along the way and then you can All right, thank you. So, um, my name is Tom. Uh, a couple more things about CAN is it's very robust, as in um, it's error t or noise tolerant, where SPI and I2C is really designed for short wires on the PCB. When you, it, it does not handle noise. So when you go a few centimeters, I2C gets very terrible. And when you run long wires, it's, it's very, very bad. So on sensors, the CAN is a differential signal. So it will actually, it's, it's immune to noise. But it helps you. Well, very similar to Ethernet. So it's, it's like Ethernet where it's, it's fast, but you need a little bit of infrastructure for the drive. So it's, the CAN is like a, like a, like a cheaper version of Ethernet. 
Yeah, thank you, Tom. All right, that's about mine. Next, uh, Luis.